this video we're talking about unit multipliers and unit multipliers basically just help us get from one set of units to another set of units. So in this first problem, we've been asked to figure out how many yards there are in 360 inches. So the first thing we need to realize is that we're starting with inches, right? We've been told we have 360 inches. So we're starting with inches and we need to get to yards. We don't know how many yards is equal to 360 inches, but we're starting at inches and we need to get to yards. Starting at inches, we have 360 of them. So 360 inches. We wanna to get to yards and your units tell you what you need to do. In order for us to get to yards and have an answer at the end that just says, you know, X yards, however many yards we have that's equal to 360 inches, we're gonna to have to get rid of our inches units. Those are gonna to have to drop away eventually because we're gonna need an answer that says, you know, X yards. The only way to get rid of inches is to divide by the inches unit. So we know we're gonna need inches in the denominator. You almost have to treat your units in the same way that you treat whole numbers or variables. In the same way that if we have 10x over 10, we know that we can cancel the 10 in the numerator and the denominator. Same thing here, when we have inches in the numerator and inches in the denominator, we know we're gonna be able to cancel them. So this is the only way we're gonna be able to get rid of them. But we're also gonna need yards in our problem. And we're gonna need yards to end up in the numerator in order to get an answer that's in terms of yards. So we could put yards up here in the numerator, but then we'd have to use this fraction to describe the relationship between yards and inches. And we don't really know exactly how many inches are in a yard. However, we do know how many inches are in a foot. So instead of putting yards here, we could put feet, and then we can say that there is one foot in 12 inches. What's gonna happen when we do this, when we multiply these out, our inches are gonna cancel, and you can see that the only units we have left are feet, which means our answer would be in feet if we did nothing else. But remember, we need our answer in yards, so what we're gonna have to do is multiply Again, we're gonna at least have to put feet in the denominator so that we can get feet and feet to cancel. Now we wanna see if we can put yards in the numerator because we know we want yards in our final answer. So now do we know a relationship between feet and yards? Well, yeah, that's a relationship we should know. There's one yard for every three feet. Now you can cancel feet in the numerator and feet in the denominator, and you can see that all of our units are canceled except for yards, and that's what we want. We wanted to get to yards. So now that we're at this point, we just have to multiply across through the numerators and multiply across through the denominator and leave these units that we want left over. So 360 times one times one is 360, and in the denominator, 12 times three is 36. So we have 36, and we're gonna leave our yards units here. 360 divided by 36 is equal to 10, so we get 10 yards as our final answer, which means that there are 10 yards in 360 inches. Now let's look at a second example. In this one, we want to figure out how many centimeters are in 1.4 kilometers. So we're starting with kilometers and we need to get to centimeters. Okay, so starting with kilometers, how many kilometers do we have? We know that we have 1.4 kilometers, so we're going to put that over here on the left-hand side. Now remember, our units immediately tell us what we need to do. We know eventually we're gonna have to get rid of kilometers, so we're gonna need kilometers in our denominator no matter what. What do we know that has a relationship with kilometers? We know that there are 1,000 meters in every one kilometer, so we can at least write that. Now we know we'll be able to cancel our kilometers, but we're gonna be left with meters, and we need to get from meters to centimeters. Remember, centimeters is our final destination. So do we have a relationship between centimeters and meters? Well, we do. We know that there are 100 centimeters in every meter. Again, with our unit multipliers, we know we're gonna need meters in the denominator because we need to cancel this meters with this one, and now we know that there are 100 centimeters in every one meter. Now if we look at our units here, we're going to be able to cancel kilometers in the numerator and kilometers in the denominator, cancel meters in the numerator and meters in the denominator, and the only units left are centimeters, which is perfect because we need our final answer in centimeters. So now that we're in that position, we just go ahead and multiply across our numerators. So we have 1.4 times 1,000 times 100 is going to be 14 with one, two, three, and then an extra two zeros. But then I'm gonna move the decimal place over one, so this guy's gonna go away, and I'm gonna be left with one, two, three, 140,000 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have one times one, so I'll have one here. And then the only thing that's left is our centimeters, so I'm gonna do 
centimeters. And now if I just write this more cleanly, I'm going to have 140,000 centimeters are the number of centimeters that are in 1.4 kilometers.